the battle of the trench. If there is any moment that resembles what is taking place with our brothers and sisters right now in Gaza, it is Khandaq. It actually is Khandaq. Because it is a time where a tactic was used to specifically starve off Medina, cut all supplies to them, to where even the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him himself, walks around malnourished. Imagine Jabir ibn Abdullah said, I saw the Prophet ﷺ walking around, he had stones tied to his stomach and he was bloated. Not the bloating after eating, the bloating of starvation. And it was 10,000 on the other side, 10,000 people that surrounded Medina from every direction. And they built this thin trench, only about three miles long. And between them and a massacre is this trench. And they are guarding every single point of that trench. They have to utilize every resource. You can't blink an eye. They were under siege for an entire month. Khandaq was a month. And the Meccans cut every single element of food and drink from reaching them in Medina. And so their food was running out, their water was running out, and they couldn't take breaks. The sleep, the lack of sleep was getting to them. And as they are guarding every single form of that trench, they also come to know that there are enemies from within, that there are those that are plotting to attack them from behind. Imagine the ru'b, imagine the fear that could penetrate you in those moments. I want you to picture yourself at that trench and every few minutes there is an attempt on that trench and you're guarding, you're guarding, you're guarding. Don't blink an eye. Don't go use the bathroom. You might mess up. Make sure that you don't miss. Make sure that you don't flinch. And at that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna nasa, that verily the people, alladheena qala lahumun nas, the people, the naysayers, the hypocrites said to them, Inna nasa qad jama'u lakum. Man, you guys are done. Look at you. A few desperate people at a trench. Your leader, the Prophet ﷺ, his stomach is poking out and bloated. Look at you. Inna nasa qad jama'u lakum. Look at all those people. You think you're going to survive this? Fakhshohum. Be afraid. You have no chance. All of the Arabs are gathering against you. And you're alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Allah did not send them angels that time that they could look at visibly and see divine aid in front of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that increased them in faith. Hazadahum imana. That actually increased their faith. They were at a point in their spiritual maturity where when people said, Look at all the people against you, it increased their faith. He said, You know what? Allah is enough for us, and He is the best of protectors. We've been with Allah long enough to know that Allah has not forsaken us. We are not afraid of the number on the other side, we are not afraid of the artillery, we're not afraid of the we're not afraid of the odds. There is nothing that you can say to shake us because we're a people of faith. We believe. We're not alone. We don't need to see 10,000 angels come down this time. We know that victory and help comes from Allah, that divine aid is on its way. Dear brothers and sisters, the people of Gaza are facing a genocide. It is a genocide that we have not seen the likes of for a very long time. And it is unfolding before the world's eyes. And the propagandists are doing everything they possibly can to hide the eyes of the American public, to hide the eyes of other people from that genocide, to justify it, to pollute. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, لا يضرهم من خذلهم. These are a people that are not hurt by those who betray them. Because they have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now here's the thing. We can be inspired as we should be when we look at the people in Gaza and we look at the people of Palestine who have shown time and time again that the odds don't matter. The odds don't matter. But let's bring it back to us. Dear brothers and sisters, you 
are not behind the trench. You're not being starved. You're not having the water taken away from you. You don't have bombs dropping on you. Alhamdulillah. We have not been tested the way they've been tested. Different people are tested in different ways. Now there are people that will continue to die in this entire process. And as they die in this process, guess what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about Ashab al ukhdud the people of the trench, not the people of Khandaq, that trench with the Prophet وسلم, the people that were thrown into a trench and killed, ذلك الفوز kabir that they have succeeded. They attained success. They have held on to their covenant with Allah. They are now in paradise. Our dead are in paradise. We have no doubt about it. Every single one of our dead, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, that died on la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that suffered in that cruelty and oppression, they're in paradise. Their victory has been attained. But then the people that are behind that trench and continuing to survive and refusing to go away, and us. If you look around and you feel alone, and you feel like the odds are stacked, I want you to know that you have a responsibility. You might not be in the trench, but maybe you're one of the people on the outside of the trench that's trying to push people away that's trying to make things easier for those behind the trench. Whatever platform you have, whatever voice you have, whatever money you have, whatever dua you have, when you use that for Allah, you are not alone. Because it wasn't just the people that were standing next to the Prophet وسلم, that had the angels that were sent. وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ And victory is only from Allah. It was also the poet Hassan al-Thabit who stood up and defended the Prophet وسلم, against the smears of the hypocrites. There are multiple fronts to this. It's not just the physical front of that trench. You have a responsibility and you have to do everything that you possibly can. And that is part of Iman, that's part of faith. This isn't politics, that's part of faith when you see people being oppressed. And will there be consequences? Are our favorite politicians gonna turn their backs on us? Are you maybe gonna get a letter from your administration at a university? Are you gonna get slapped on the wrist? Will you have certain consequences that will be faced? Is your social media going to be taken down? Maybe. Who cares? Who cares? People are carrying their dead babies and saying, Alhamdulillah and La ilaha illallah, knowing that victory comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who cares if we face consequences for trying to be their voice outside of the trench? And if people say, Inna nasa qad jama'u lakum, look, Palestine is a losing battle. Palestine is not a losing battle. Palestine will win, insha'Allah ta'ala. Palestine will win, Gaza will win, Al-Aqsa will be liberated. We have as much certainty in that as we do when we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that wa man nasru illa min indillah. That victory and help only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will win. They will win. When? When Allah wants it to happen, but it will happen. And subhanAllah, I was reading, and I'll end with this inshaAllah ta'ala, I was reading from the words and the literature of people that fought apartheid in South Africa. And when you talk about the odds being stacked against the people, the odds were stacked against those that were fighting, that were fighting apartheid in South Africa as well. But you know what? They persevered without Iman. What about you when you have Iman? What about you when you have Iman? The narrative will change one day and all of these pro-apartheid, pro-occupation politicians and celebrities and voices, everyone that justified this genocide and madness will go down in history as an evil, malicious human being, as a failure in history. And more than that, will be raised up in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have to face the consequences of justifying and supporting and enabling this evil. But what about us? I want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and say, I did everything I possibly could to not let them be slaughtered in the dark. I did everything I possibly could to not let them be butchered without anyone watching. 
and I was willing to face whatever small consequences I had here. And you know what, dear brothers and sisters, I want to fast forward to an image, and it's one that I've been thinking about in these last few days. Some of us have family in Gaza, some of us have relatives, and even if you don't, your hearts have moved, you've shed a few tears, I hope, you've made some sincere du'as for your brothers and sisters, I pray that's the case. Some of those people that you're seeing in those videos that you've never met in real life, I want you to imagine the scene when you meet them in the hereafter. Those people that showed up on your phone and you watched them pulling out their babies from under the rubble. Those people who cried out and said, where is the world? I want you to imagine when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts you right in front of that person on the day of judgment and you recognize them and they recognize you. And they come up to you and they say, Jazakallahu khayra. May Allah reward you. Oh Allah, this person saw me from thousands of miles away and did not back away from me. This brother, this sister was there for me. This person raised their voice. And all along, we knew that you would help us, Allah. We knew that victory was from you. Palestine will win, insha'Allah ta'ala. Gaza will win, insha'Allah ta'ala. Al-Aqsa will be liberated, insha'Allah. And we will not let propaganda and the machinery of propaganda with all of its establishments and powers intimidate us. In fact, it should increase us in faith. You know, it's one thing to not despair, it's another thing to be increased. Zadahum imana. Be increased in faith. The more that you see them scrambling, they have to make up hoaxes about the Palestinian people. The more that they generate AI images and make up their slanders and their lies and frame and stereotype, the more that they have confidence, the more that we have certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ala inna nasrullahi qareeb. We're on the right side of history, but in the night time. And we're on the right side of this entire atrocity 